everyone and welcome to another video from Colour with Claire. Today we're going to be looking at the 120 set of Arteza watercolour pencils. So I already reviewed the 120 expert coloured pencils, the non-water soluble kind, um, a couple of weeks ago I think on my channel and uh, now we're looking at the expanded set of the watercolour range. So I already reviewed the 72 set of their watercolour pencils last year sometime and I'll be leaving a link for that in the description below because I don't really want to rehash everything I've already said about these pencils. I have already reviewed them. The only difference now is we have more colours. So it's still going to be exactly the same information. So I would really recommend that you go back first and watch my 72 set review and you'll find out all the information you'll need to know about them. Today we're just going to be looking at the expanded range and seeing the uh, colours that we now have on offer in the 120 set. Now along with the watercolour pencils I also got this Arteza a pencil case so I think it's a polyester kind of pencil case it feels kind of durable it doesn't feel like it's going to rip or tear um, it's kind of shiny and it feels it feels kind of tough it feels you know hard wearing now on this side it's got a, a handle that you can lift it with and there are two zips one either side imprinted with the Arteza name for you to keep them nice and zipped up and um, you know secure so you don't have to buy this alongside the watercolour pencils I just thought it'd be nice to have something to uh, to keep them in and inside the pencil case if we talk about that first there are 64 different elastic slots and they uh, each one can hold three pencils so 205 pencil capacity in total so as you can see I've got my watercolour pencils set out in threes and at the end of the pencil case you can see I still have this whole row of elastic as well as two more rows so I could easily you know fit in loads more pencils I don't even I can't calculate how many but a good few anyway um so that's the the pencil case itself it also has on the back along with the Arteza name a little velcro pouch that you can just put anything you like in there I would recommend putting in um a chart a swatch chart so what we're going to do right now is swatch all the colors out and then i'll put it in here so it's always with the pencils and i can just get it out and check what colors look like at a glance so that's the pencil case i think it's about 15.99 on the arteza website in british pounds which i think is around about 18 dollars, something like that but it is a good sturdy pencil case and as you can see it'll hold loads of pencils so that's an option if you wanted to now let's get into the actual pencils themselves because i'm sure that's what we all want to look at so as i've said they are exactly the same as the pencils that i reviewed in my previous watercolor video there's no difference in the leads or you know the colors or anything like that um, the barrels are all the same they're hexagonally barrels they have silver writing on them and uh, yeah they're exactly the same we just have loads more colors to play with so what I'm gonna do is I'm instead of sort of picking through and seeing the new colors that we've got let's just swatch them all so that we can see them you know every single pencil that you're gonna get in this particular set so I'm gonna move them to one side now first of all I'm just gonna swatch out the color and then I have my trusty little aqua brush to um to swatch out you know the, what they look like when they're wet so making sure that we're all nice and close up if i can just zoom in and hopefully that will be nice and focused uh, and let's just get started so if you want to sort of fast forward this video to the end because i'm just going to do it in real time um if you want to fast forward just to see what they all look like feel free to do that so I'm not going to um, label the colours on this swatch sheet because it'll take a lot more time and also I'm going to be keeping them in the order that they're in anyway so I don't really need to, to do that. So first up we have Jasmine Yellow. So as I mentioned in the previous review you can tell that these pencils do have quite a lot of pigment content. They're not ever going to be on the same par as something like the Karandash Museum pencils, for example. Um, you know, th these are much, much, much cheaper. And although they do purport light fastness, I'm not sure exactly how they test their light fastness. These little plus signs are supposed to um, indicate the light fast rating, but I've had no information on how they actually test them. So I don't know, you know, I'm not going to go and say that they're 
artist quality watercolour pencils um, until I've got the whole facts and information. But they do definitely have a really, really decent amount of pigment, especially when you compare them to other watercolour pencils that you might find in a kind of budget range. So as you can see, the tips of each pencil are just snapping off and that's because I've just sharpened them to a razor point, which, you know, with any kind of pencil, especially soft ones that have, are water soluble, they're going, to, um, they're going to end up snapping just at the end. But other than that, they are very, very strong. They've got a really thick core. I believe it's over four millimetres. It might be four and a half millimetres. I don't want to give you the wrong information, but I don't have that on me at the moment. Everything, as I say, is in that previous video that I did when I reviewed them. So just going to go through each colour and then I'll pop some water on and you can see how they dissolve. So really nice shades of yellow at the moment. Yellow and coming down into the ochre orangey shades. The only thing you have to do is just count and make sure that you've got the right pencil because, you know, with them being in three slots, it's difficult sometimes. So I've got three, six, nine. Yep, yeah, that's good. I'm on target. Uh, so this one's called Tuscan Sun. And all of the pencil colours match up to the standard Arteza Expert uh, pencils. So if you want to mix your watercolour with your standard pencils on the same project but keep that same tone and that same hue you can do that so that makes it you know much better i think that you can experiment with mixed media so yeah i am aware that there's quite a lot of dust being created just because of that very tip of the pencil but i can assure you they are very strong and they don't break easily at all they do seem much more durable than other watercolour pencils that you would buy in this price range and below. So we've got Coyote Brown now, which is, it's almost like an olivey green, but it's kind of ochre as well. And this is Camel Brown. So yeah, if you do have the standard Arteza pencils, you will recognise all of these different colours, all of the names. This one's beautiful, it's like a vermilion colour. What's this one called? Yeah, it's called vermilion. <laughs> Guarantee you, I did not actually know that before I swatched it. Um, then we've got Burnt Ochre. And Rust Orange. Rust Orange is a new one, it's a new addition, I know that for sure. It's a beautiful colour. And we have cinnamon, so you can see I'm not pressing hard on these whatsoever, uh, they really sort of lay themselves down, they're very very soft. This one is sienna brown, which is a kind of a reddishy brown, and then blood orange. Can you hear the little tips snapping off? And now we've got to the end of one sort of row, I'm going to come up and do the little bit of water so that you can see what they look like um, soluble. So obviously these colours at the beginning aren't going to be showing you much on camera at all because they're so light. But to the eye, they definitely do dissolve completely. There's none of that kind of streakiness or... You know when sometimes you use a water-soluble pencil and the actual shape that you've scribbled stays there, you can see it, even though you've added the water, it doesn't completely melt and dissolve. Well, these do. So you completely lose that square shape that you started with, as you can see. So 100% dissolvability I'm going to call it which is a testament again to the the quality and the amount of pigment that you get in in the pencil coming down through all of these 
really light colours and we'll begin to see just how well they do dissolve when we come into some of the darker colours because you'll be able to see it better then. You see how it just completely eradicates the, um, the shape that you scribbled down. So as I've said, if you're looking for something that is top of the range, top of the line, light fast and has the maximum amount of pigment, the brightest ever, um, you're definitely looking at something that's a bit more high end and made for artists like your Karan Dash Museum, which I've also reviewed. Um, if you want something that's not going to break the bank, that has 120 different colours, which is a fantastic amount for um you know amount of colors for a watercolor pencil especially because i think the museum only come in 76 maximum uh so 120 colors so you've got maximum sort of colors there um and also that are still really nice and bright and they dissolve well and they do what they're meant to do then you can't go wrong with arteza i mean the brand in general are just they've really over exceeded my expectations when I first started using Arteza products because I thought these are these are really cheap products if you are comparing to you know like I said other artist materials or the colouring materials they are very very cheap and inexpensive and you think uh, you know how can there be an extent of quality there but I guarantee you that you will not be disappointed with an Arteza product because you definitely get what you pay for, if not more. That's what I've found anyway, and I've never ever been disappointed with anything that Arteza have released. So we have a, I think this is the Sienna brown down here where it starts to get a nice and reddish brown. It's one of my favorite browns, Sienna brown. And then the vermilion at the end. So I don't think I've got too much water left in my brush. I might have to go and run and fill it up in a minute because it's getting a little bit dry. But hopefully you can see just from this sort of lipstick swatch um, how well they're going down and how well they're dissolving. So we'll go back to the top and we will continue. So next up, we're going into the reds now. So this is rose red. So as I've said, the little tip, because I've sharpened them so sharp, will break off. But after that, I'm just going to do it quite hard here so you can see there is no breakage. It's just that initial tip. I don't want you to come away from this thinking that they're breaking all over the place because that's not the case. It's just me being a bit overzealous with the sharpener. So we've got Carmine Red. And... Crimson red. It's a little bit pinker, the crimson red. Now we've got another new one, which is the Venetian red. Now I have missed out some new ones because, you know, I really should have got organised before this video, but um, because I think I, would, I should have. I'll tell you what I'll do is at the end of the video, I'll sort of cut this off and then come back and loop you in and I'll put a little star next to all of the new colours or I'll list them on the screen, something like that. But just to uh, just to show you the brand new ones rather than just the whole lot and not knowing which ones you'll be getting fresh, fresh colours. So this is Passion Fruit Red. That was definitely in the old set. I use it all the time as a um, kind of like a dark skin base. This is Cherry Red and Spanish Red, which is another new one. I'm recognising the names of the new ones purely because I just did the Arteza Expert Coloured Pencil 120 review and I recognise some of the new names. So we've got Garnet, which is an old one, and Eggplant Purple. I'm 
should be noted as well that these will dissolve and work on any type of paper obviously watercolor paper um, or mixed media paper that's made to take water and you know things like that is going to work a little bit better than you know bog standard printer paper but using these in your coloring books absolutely perfect they're all they're you know they're still going to dissolve and stuff you just might have a bit of a more professional result possibly with the right paper the paper makes a lot of difference sometimes so that was burgundy and we've got wine red which might be a new one i don't know like i said at the end of it i'll do the whole list and then you can see uh dark chocolate brown and espresso brown am i oh gone off the screen you know what i'm like uh this is espresso brown and then we've got cocoa so they've really extended the browns on the 120 set as well which is great because brown is such a versatile color so this is hazelnut brown I like to have as many browns and as many greys as possible. This is Burnt Umber. If you're wondering where my trusty little dust brush is, I've actually been using it in the kitchen because I've been painting and some of the wall is just flaking off some of the, the old paint or the plaster or something, I don't know. So I used my little dust brush to uh, sweep off the skirting boards before I painted them. So it's a little bit worse for wear at the moment. I might need to get a new one. <laughs> but it was very, very handy at the time. That was Raw Umber. And this is Raw Sienna. And I know that both of these are brand new colours. Raw Umber and Sienna. Very, very handy colours to have. Especially for skin, landscapes, all sorts. Then we have my absolute favourite brand new colour, which is Earth Red. Now this is an incredible colour for so many different uses it's got that landscape look to it dirt earth it's got um it's got a kind of skin tony peachy very deep peach look to it so you can you can use it all over the shop it was the colour that i was used most in my arteza skin tone set and i absolutely adore it then we've got coral and salmon pink and then let's come back in with some water. Just checking the water levels, not very much. Might need to go and do that in a sec. Okay, so here we go. So you can see now that we're getting onto the darker, more rich colours, what I meant about the original shape that you scribbled being completely dissolved. And to be honest, sometimes even high-end pencils, you know, do fail at that. So that's, uh, that's probably the biggest thing for me is uh, the way that these easily just completely melt and you're not left with any scratchy, scribbly bits. This really does look like a lipstick swatch, doesn't it? So we're getting to the end of the reds now, moving into purples. I think this is the eggplant purple. Two are quite similar. This one's just a little bit more desaturated. Definitely going to have to go and get some water. Just bear with me a sec. Okay, we're 
they're all filled up. So next up, we're moving into the browns now. I've just got a load of water all over my paper. It's not good. So moving into the browns, I think this was dark chocolate brown. Still got some purple left on there. Just got to wait for the water to come through. That's the only thing about water brushes, you sometimes have to... You don't know how hard to squeeze them and how much water is going to come out, so it's a little bit unreliable sometimes. That's it, we've got more of a wash coming out now. Obviously the more water that you add, the sort of, the less rich the colours are going to look because obviously you're watering it down the more you do that the less pigment you're kind of going to see you see how these swatches these last three that i've got more water on are looking far better than these they look a little bit streaky with the brush but uh, it's always best to use a little bit more water if you can i know that not all coloring books will allow you know the, the paper won't won't allow for an awful lot of water but if you can, just see how easily that dissolves. Just use a little bit more water. So this water brush that I am using is a very fine tip water brush. It's made by Kurotaki. Um, and I think you can get it on Amazon. They've got different colours. If you just look for the fine tip, then you'll get it. Okay, so that's another line done with a column. Let's get to the top again. So I think that that last one was salmon pink. Then we've got marmalade orange. So I am quite aware that this video might be a bit, I don't wanna say boring, because every time I say boring, somebody comments saying, you're not boring, not boring. So I don't wanna sort of self-deprecate that way but I do you know it is just one of these videos where I'm just showing you the colours basically and there's no real reviewing to be done it's just check out the uh, the extended range of this pencil that I've already reviewed <laughs> it's one of those this is peaches and cream it's one of the main skin tone colours that we often use in the Arteza pencil set this is pink macaron otherwise known as macaroon which it was in the original set. We've now changed it to Macaron. Uh, then we've got Peony Pink, and all of these are, wish they wouldn't snap. Uh, all of these are pencils that you would find in the previous set of 72. And we've got Watermelon Pink, which might be a new one actually. We'll see at the end. We've got Fruit Punch. I love these pinks, they're just beautiful. We've got Flamingo Pink. And Plum Purple. It's gonna be a good blow. <laughs> Plum Purple. Then we have Fuchsia, which, oh, there we've got our first breakage. Let me just uh, pop that in the sharpener. Close your ears. There we go. I'm not going to sharpen it as sharp this time. So that breakage, um, well, it must have happened in the pencil case. That's not good, is it? But it's the only one, I think. I'm looking at the other pencils now, and they all look perfect. So maybe it was just a, just a dud. And we've got magenta. Oh. I should have probably gone through all of these pencils and just snapped the tip off slightly before I started this review because <laughs> it would have made a much nicer swatch to watch without them popping everywhere and scaring the life out of me every two seconds. Uh, that was Amethyst Purple. Then we've got Royal Purple. Then we've 
and Violet. I love the name Violet. I think that would be a beautiful name for a kid, a little girl. I believe Kelly O'Gorman's little girl is called Violet. Because you mentioned it before on, um, on one of the shopping channel things that she's done. Lovely name. Uh, Orchid Purple. I'm always interested to know how people choose their children's names. I think it's a great, you know, it's, it's a really great insight sometimes into people's, I don't know about likes and dislikes, but I don't know. It's, it's like finding out a little bit more about somebody when you ask why they chose a certain name, you know, because they often have meanings behind them, whether that's just, uh, you know, a family member, a granddad or somebody that had somebody that had that name in the family. That was Uber Purple, by the way, and this is Periwinkle Blue. <laughs> My kids' names. <laughs> I've gone through all that saying. I think you find out, you know, a good thing, a good deal of um, information out about, about someone by how they choose their children's names. And then my children's names were kind of very simply chosen. I chose my first son, Shane, his name when I was five weeks pregnant. And, you know, by that time, if you've not already, you know, had your child's name set in stone, it's still quite early, really, to choose a name, isn't it? And, um, but I just absolutely loved it. I don't know why. Um, I just love the name. And then, obviously, he's got, he's got his dad's middle name. And then my second son, Max, that was just a name that seemed to be just in trend at the time. And I think that a lot of the time, especially in, like, the 80s, especially with my name, Claire, it was a big name kind of back then, late 80s, Claire. And um, I think a lot of people just choose uh, names by trends as well. So it doesn't always mean something. And I've got no idea how we've got onto this, uh, this thing of names. But anyway. So starting off up here again. And I am doing my usual thing of wiping my brush on my hand. Um, but these are non-toxic. So <laughs> that's fine. We can do that. These are obviously much lighter colours, so you might not be able to see a great deal. Just making sure we've got enough water coming out of this brush. Next time I'll just get a normal paintbrush and water. Let's go to back to traditional Bob Ross tools. Mind you, didn't he use like really weird wacky tools like decorators brushes and stuff? So not a great example, but sometimes the things that are supposed to make your life easier, like water inside a brush, uh, don't always work as well as the tried and tested methods, do they? I'm wondering if we can fit another two rows on here. I think we probably can. Oh, this is gorgeous. What colour was this? Let's look. I think it was the orchid purple, was it? Oh, I don't know. Or it might be the magenta. Yeah, I think it's the magenta. Yeah, because that came before the amethyst, which is this one. So that was magenta. That's packed with pigment. So we've got amethyst, then what do we have? Uh, lavender? Yeah, lavender. And they're very, very close. I think the lavender has more blue, whereas the amethyst has more red. Am I off screen? Oh, I was almost off screen then. I always forget to check. So the prices for these pencils, just uh, to tell you now, for the um, 120 set that we're swatching at the moment, 
you're looking at about 15 sorry not 15 that was the pencil case uh 53.99 in pounds which i think is about 75 dollars on the arteza us site but i do have a special color with claire 10 percent discount code which i'm going to put up on the screen now and also in the description i believe it's color with claire 4 but i don't want to say that for sure i think it might be though and i think that's working until February. I'm so crap at being organised. I should know all this, but all the details will be in the description anyway, because that's when I'll get the time to go and check. Okay. Next up, where did we stop? So I think that that was sky blue, then sapphire blue. So next up, we've got sea blue. Really nice blue. And then Egyptian blue, which I think is a new one. We've then got Prussian blue. Blues are always my favourite colours to swatch in any pencil set. So I just think there's such a spectrum of different blues and I don't know, it just pleases me. So we've got, what was that one? Blueberry blue. Then we've got Midnight blue. I got told off by someone in the comments once for blowing away the debris because I might breathe it into my lungs or something but I don't know I guess that's the risk I'm willing to take. Um, indigo. Ultramarine blue. Ultramarine is the same throughout any pencil set isn't it? It's one of those colours that always looks the same. Is it something to do with I'm not sure what it's something to do with is it one of those like a non-photo blue kind of color where it's always the same I don't know what I'm talking about but it seems to be every ultramarine in every set of pencils is exactly the same tone and shade it does to me anyway this is Aegean blue and I think there's a sea called the Aegean sea isn't there so that's probably where the color has come from and this is deep teal Another new colour, if I remember correctly. And then Peacock Blue. Ocean Blue. Ooh. Robin Egg Blue, which is just a delight, both in name and colour. Really nice colour. And then turquoise, again another beautiful colour. You see the whole range of blues that you can get from one set. I think that's why they're my favourites. Then we've got spearmint green. Beautiful green that one. Parakeet green, another new one. And mint green. And then we have lime green, which is the lightest of all the greens, the lightest and brightest. We've got pear green, which is much more of an olivey, mossy kind of green. And absinthe green. Now I can't remember if I've done a Prismacolor to Arteza conversion chart. I've done that many charts, I can't remember if I've done that one, but somebody requested it the other day and I need to check whether I've actually already done it because it's, you know, it's very likely that I could have done something and totally forgot and do it all over again. Um, so if it turns out that I haven't done it, that's something that I'm going to be doing really, really soon. So if you want to figure out the, the colours from the Arteza set, what they translate to in the Prismacolor set, that's what I'm going to be doing a chart for very soon. So we've done another row and we've just got one more to do. Come to the top again, make sure we've got lots of water. 
we go. Just love how they melt. Yeah, ultramarine. It's something to do with wool dye or I don't know. It's it's one of those standard colours that is it's never any different. I'm, I'm still waffling on about this because I'm trying to remember what it is that I've read about ultramarine. But hopefully you guys will tell me in the comments because you'll be a lot sort of cleverer than me <laughs> and be able to retain information better than I can. Um, but yeah, you can just see, can't you, how beautifully these melt. This is a gorgeous colour. Which one was this? I think it might be the peacock blue. Or is it the one before that? Deep teal. Oh, I'm not sure. I should have labelled them, shouldn't I? I'm not doing a very efficient reviewer job of this video. <laughs> but it's so much fun just to swatch them and see the colour. And just see them melt as well. It's really satisfying for me. I don't know if it is for you. <laughs> so that was the robin egg blue, wasn't it? That one there that I'm doing now, I think. So if we count back from that one. Yeah, it was uh, deep teal. That really nice blue there. So moving into turquoise colours now. We're going into the green side of the blue spectrum. turquoise and then spearmint green next. I love the names that Arteza chooses as well for their pencils. This is parakeet green. Now my favourite, if somebody asks me what my favourite colour is, my go-to answer is purple. It's always been purple. But if you ask me what my favourite sort of more in-depth colour shade is, it's parrot green which is I know completely different to purple but I absolutely love the parrot green Prismacolor colour which is very very similar to these here. I think it's a beautifully exotic and summery and just really really nice colour I don't know. What I would like to know is if you want to leave me a comment is what your favourite oh didn't clean that one properly uh what your favourite colour is that's not just a basic red green blue I want to know your favourite shade of a colour so like I say mine is parrot green I also really like aquamarine which is a little bit more blue to be honest with you I love all colour just incredible isn't it the amount of different shades and I don't think there's any colour I dislike if there's a colour you dislike tell me in the comments so we've got to the end of another row next up we have apple green and I'm just betting that we're going to end up not having enough room on this row <laughs> to get right to the end but we'll see so apple green then matcha green Hang on a minute, no, I've already done matcha green. No, that's it. Apple green. <laughs> and then fern green. An emerald green, my birthstone. What's your birthstone? I don't know, I'm asking and demanding all of this information. It's not some sort of... <laughs> it's not tell me mother's maiden name in the last three digits of your card or anything like that, but... Um, it's I love to hear from you so you know if you leave me a comment about pretty much anything really you'll always get a little heart from me to show you that I've read it and uh, if needed I will reply to you but um, I just like hearing 
just or everything just any any comment you want to leave me whether it's about what kind of day you're having or uh something you want to see on the channel or anything like that just getting little comments from you it always brightens my day so then we've got moving into the mossy kind of greens now this is moss green actually and then olive green and jungle green now I'm flipping over to the last edge the last layer of my pencil case so maybe we'll be in luck this is forest green and then we go straight to black or noir as it's called then We've got white quartz, which is the white pencil, which you won't be able to see because I can't see it. Uh, onyx black, so a couple of different shades of black. This one is a bit like a lamp black, which is a slightly, slightly greyer black, a bit of a lighter black. It's not as dark, dark and deep. This is a charcoal grey definitely not going to have enough room we're going to have to turn another page it's so annoying um koala gray and if i remember rightly i have already put these in order of dark to light warm and cool grays which is really handy i did that on the chart that i made for the 120 expert pencils from arteza so you can go and have a look at that this is smoke gray and cloudy gray and then steel grey. <sighs> Dolphin grey. These are all of the cool greys, obviously. And then fog grey. And then I think we're going into the warm greys because we're starting dark again. This is ash black. Am I on screen? No, this is ash black. So, Let's get some water on there and then flip the page for our final pencils. I love this green. I love this kind of bright leprechaun-y green. This is a really nice one as well. This is the emerald. I'm just wonder I'm just trying to see if we can fit that final row on the one sheet. See how small these have gone compared to this. <laughs> how short they are. I always underestimate when I do charts. I think we'll be able to fit them on the edge there. <clears throat> Lovely black. I love how that dissolves. I don't know whether to even bother with the white because we won't be able to see it, but still got a slight bit of black on there as well, so that didn't work, did it? Um, let's leave that one. It's just a white. Uh, then we've got the charcoal grey, I think, or was it the the one that's like the lamp black? Yeah, it's the onyx black and then the charcoal grey. Do you ever do something for so long that your eyes just sort of go 
weird and you're just staring but it's all blurred that's what just happened to me then I couldn't actually see what I was painting I'm off screen yet again for the last, I don't know, 10 swatches. Sorry, guys. Okay, so back up to the top one more time and we're going to squeeze on these last few colours. So next up is the pewter grey. So we're still in the warm greys now, going from dark to light. Then we've got the elephant grey. and the stone grey. <laughs> Mushroom grey. And storm grey, which is blue grey. Really, really nice colour, that one. Then got shadow grey. I think I probably should have sw uh, switched those. They probably got switched somewhere because this is still within the warm grey palette and this one's completely different. We've then got concrete grey, so tons and tons of greys. These could be neutral greys actually. And then we have the metallic colours, so silver. Really interested to see how these dissolve. Gold. Uh, copper <sighs> interestingly unicorn purple and finally got there in the end dreamy blue it's a really nice color actually dreamy blue so that is the whole 120 colors Let's just get a bit of uh, water on these end ones and uh, see what they look like. So I probably could have done them all this size. <laughs> really, really like that one called storm grey wasn't it it's really nice so here we go with the metallics I'll be interested to see if they retain their metallicism uh, when they're dry after they've had the water applied so we've got gold there and then copper Still melt really nicely, just like all the others. Then we've got the unicorn pink. Finally, dreamy blue. That's really, really nice. That would go quite nicely with that storm grey, actually. It's quite a bit of a blend. Uh, and you can blend them. If you go to my previous review of the 72 set, you will see me blending them, I'm sure. I can't really remember, but I'm sure I would have. Um, so there we go. Let me zoom out so we can see all of the colours. There we go. And as I said, I will be listing on the screen all of the brand new colours to the 120 set. But this was just really to, in real time, just show you what the colours look like, how they react to water. And um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed watching it. If you can see my hand, here we go. I've made a nice masterpiece on there. Um, I think I told you already the prices. Obviously, all the links will be in the description for you to buy these, either on Arteza with my discount code or on Amazon. So it's totally up to you where you buy them from, uh, but the links will be in the description for you to have a look at. So really want to know what you think of the extended range of colours here. If you're a fan of Arteza products, um, and just do tell me which one your favourite shade is. And any questions, just ask. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon on Colour with Claire.